So we continue from where we stopped and uh, we'll take up a new topic and therefore let us just go a few steps back. So we did realize that printing is a complex process. It involves selection of dyes based on the fibers or the pigments, then the thickening agents, various kinds of thickening agents. You had to do worry about the rheology. You had to make a stock thickening. You had to add various compounds there which should not affect the thickening or the aging property or the time with which it can withstand all the thing without changing the rheology, without significantly changing the rheology. Then your binders, binders obviously are for pigments. Uh, what has happened is different kind of binders have come up with low glass chance and temperature so that the handle of the fabric after pigment printing is not changed. And various auxiliaries which may be acids, bases, humectants and various other oxidizing reducing agents other than wetting agent. They all have to be added in certain sequence in certain process, a certain composition and therefore uh, it is a complex process. This is what we understood. Then making of the design and transfer onto the screen and rollers means first selection of design which anyway depends on who is the client. Then you transfer the design on tracings. From the tracings, you transfer them onto the rollers or the screen, which finally have to be used. So it's a complex process. Coming to other points like a machine, which is, let's say, a flatbed or a rotary screen or a roller printing machine. So important thing is how many screens, how many rollers you are supposed to make. So depend on the design, you first do the separation of colors. There is a green, there is a yellow, there is a light green, there is a blue, there is a red. In the design, they have to separate them and accordingly make tracings for each color. So if it is an eight color design, so it means you will make eight tracings based on the separation of colors and then you will make either eight screens or eight rollers. And so whole of this is a complex process. So you're not supposed to make errors anywhere. And then of course we do printing, accurate printing. If there are eight colors and part of design, then you better fix them very accurately. If the adjustments are little wrong here and there, you will get a fault. And uh, that is what becomes an important part. So what it means is tomorrow somebody says that I want a new design, kindly print it or give me, show me a few designs which I may like to, you know, buy and use. So you have to go through all this process before you can show anything called a design. You can't show it on a, you know, just some imagination kind of a thing or like you just draw. So you have to show it after printing to someone who says, well, this is it, you like it or you don't like it. And based on the fiber of fabric chemistry, you may get different shades. And that therefore has to be shown. It's a long process. Even getting approvals takes a long process. Then washing and drying, of course, has to be done. The runoff color during this whole process has to be, you have to be very careful on that. So that does not go to the areas where you are not supposed to have that color. And then of course drying, that is, if nothing else, energy, of course, is there. So there are chances of errors in almost every step that you make because errors only get added, you know, there is nothing called a subtraction of errors and therefore it becomes more and more complex and difficult process and if you make error, the rejects will be high and that is the conventional printing for you which has been in vogue and being used every day. So this becomes an interesting part. So now the question that comes is that can we do things differently? Like you don't have rollers, you do not have screens and you don't have anything else and what can you do? So that particular conventional printing obviously involves a large number of steps. So people will be interested in can we avoid some steps and work around. Then you may be interested in the design if somebody says, well, I want to show, uh, see a few 
designs, how quickly can you make a design and show to the customer and get approvals. They are practical problems and they are less to do with your thought process. And how can one address the energy environment concern? Because every time you are printing, then you are drying. Every time you are fixing, after that you are washing. After washing, then you are again drying and then you again. So wash, dry, that is part. Then whatever goes into the waste water, obviously, has an environment concern and you are supposed to work on that. Everything, therefore, is, does it, it costs something. So when you talk about environment, so there are costs to be, you know, incurred. So how does one do this process, which can probably address some of these issues? So this is the topic that we will start working, discussing, called the transfer printing. So as the name suggests that the printing is done somewhere else, not directly on the fabric. Till now, all the printing that was being done was directly on the fabric. Whatever happens, happens and you could do. Now you are talking about, no, we can probably print somewhere else and then do the transfer. So theoretically speaking, this is a process by which designs can be transferred without image distortion from a print on a paper to a textile. Now paper could be a film also, but generally paper is what people may be using. So you first print the paper and then transfer from the paper to a fabric. Now when say without distortion, now what it means is that the kind of errors that you were expecting that you have there were six color, seven color systems and you have very sharp lines somewhere else, they overlap, they may smudge one into the other. All those things will not happen because whatever is supposed to be on the paper, if you like that, then you just transfer. We are obviously hoping that the printing paper is relatively less costly. Paper is supposed to be a very smooth surface compared to a textile which obviously has undulating surfaces, hills and valleys all over. Making sharp images there is a very tough thing. But on a paper you can make very nice sharp images and once that is done and if it is possible for you to transfer then it becomes a very interesting process. So this actually attracted a lot of uh, attention uh, quite early. 70s and 80s, people were really thinking about it as to how things could be done. So whatever design, let us say this is a design on a paper or whatever colors that you have and all you are expecting is that after the transfer exactly same thing will be on something called a fabric. So you have this transfer and this is what we call as a paper to fabric. So you have a transfer printing on your hand. So some common sense advantages that we can talk about. So designs may be printed and stored see, on a cheap and non-bulky substrate. So bulk of a paper is very less, the thickness of a paper is very small. You can make a roll and you keep it. And so storage could be cheap, the whole thing, otherwise we had to do store all kinds of rollers, screens and then bring them out whenever you have to. So that's, that's one advantage, one can say is a common sense advantage. Design then can be printed onto textile based on the demand. If somebody says I want the same design 2000. 18 or 17, I got it in September, month of September, you throw, bring out the same thing. So you actually have a printed design which has to be just transferred. So if somebody says that, well, you had given me on 
this fabric which was let's say one up one down kind of a fabric woven now i want the same thing on my knitted stuff can you do that so they say yes let's try so different kind of substrate to which this transfer is valid can be used and then you can see well this looks this good or this bad in the substrate and then you can take a call whether i need it or not need it so it's a quick stuff the production of short run repeat orders is easy if somebody wants only 100 meters of a printed design most of the mill would say sorry we we don't have energy and time to do this because the whole process is so long in this case you may say well i don't mind maybe i'll give you 100 meters also if you can so that means short run repeat let but in this month after three months another little bit for the same design say it's possible and that is what becomes some attraction this is a very interesting thing that you can apply this design with a relatively low skill worker and a printing not only the printing head department's head the people who work on the machine the people who fix the design the people who transfer the design all of them have to be highly skilled in this case the skill part has been taken care somewhere else the textile person only has to have a simple machine of transfer and so skill level could be very low that means anybody can theoretically open a textile printing section get the paper design paper from somewhere else who who may be a paper printing system and bring it in and start transferring so low skill low skill anything that requires low skill means the errors are very less otherwise you require high skilled people no reject rates or maybe low reject rates no is the right word because if you have just little skill that you can actually have a fabric fed into the machine in a open width and the paper is always in open width they go together they don't slip the temperatures if so further the temperature of a transfer is required that you have been able to make in control then chances of rejects are almost zero but yes you can always make a mistake not worry about a wrinkle somewhere else or the fabric and the paper are slipping then obviously things are but invariably this may not be the case the stocking and storage costs are lower because space requirement is also low only thing one has to be concerned is if it is a paper that it should not be a moist environment the water should not be seeping all through that's the only thing that you have to worry about in case that you can take care which you should then the overall costs are going to be low so invariably the screens after the print they have to be cleaned so two things can happen one somebody did clean but some part of some design at some portion is blocked of course you are supposed to clean or somewhere where actually there was a block it has come out because of friction and other things so you have to keep repairing them correctly so that kind of a problem will not be here because you just don't have to do anything so the textile printer which does not have to go through the cumbersome processes of conventional printing and suddenly you may say now the printing is not complex you just have a paper you just transfer and thank you very much and done the accuracy of designs can be achieved on a paper which is a smooth surface if it is simple designs of squares and rectangles and circles that's easy and anybody can print lines and squares but if it's a complex design where the fine lines are the one which are important to you then it is very accurate to print it is very easy to accurately print on a paper and so that one printing machinery equipment printing machinery and equipment are relatively inexpensive and would require less space okay and if everything is right you do not have to wash off 
one of the case in point is the dispersed dye and polyester. If it is already diffused in, you do not need to wash off. Even in dyeing, you have to do many other sequences with dispersed dye in STHP as well. And so, no effluent production. So, you could actually be looking at environment cost, you are looking at you know washing expenses and there is the error due to washing color flowing from one to another one portion is not obviously there. So, there seem to be umpteen number of reasons why one should actually be adopting this technology called the transfer printing. Certain designs and photographic effect cannot be obtained by conventional printing process. This is very important actually. Till the time you actually had a concept of transfer printing, you were not even dreaming about it. What kind of a design that you are thinking of on a machine, let us say a rotary screen printing machine, we said 8 color, how many more? Let us say we can take 12 colors. So, 12 different shades you can produce, but if you look at a human face, starting from one end to the other, the shades are continuously varying. And if you divide this into 12 shades, then you will only look at a posterized picture, posterized picture. It will never be natural. And therefore, a large number of design only had such kind of designs which would not be photographic, which is nothing to do with the scenery, which is nothing to do with the faces, which is nothing to do with the real life color and design. All right? So, that could not have been done at all and cannot be done even today with a conventional printing process. Then we were printing always fabrics and then hoping somebody will use them to make garments. So, today it is possible for you in this kind of a scenario that you can print any part of a garment. You want to print only the pocket, fine. You want to print only the collar, is fine. Or only one side of a sleeve is fine. But in the conventional way, if you say, well, I will put the t-shirt through the screen printing in the normal way or a roller screen, rotary screen, it will be pretty difficult to handle because the size and shapes are very different. And so, becomes this becomes a real case for consideration. It is called the transfer printing. So, a photographic image like this you can see if it is on a piece of paper or a roll, you can cut it out and just take it away and print it. Look at see how many shades of things are there here. A simple picture which you actually see well it is natural, it is ok, there is nothing great about it. But the greatness is the moment you start printing it. How many colors? So, you said 12, try to divide into 12 colors, you do not know what you are going to get. All right. In the conventional sense, the way we understand the textile printing. All right. And here there is no problem, you just take it, take a t-shirt and then say well this is what I want and so wherever you want to place it, you can place your design. If it requires only thermal treatment, you give the thermal treatment and that is it and you have a same kind of a effect on the textile. Somebody may ask well exactly look the same, it may not exactly look the same because that was a plain surface versus its, this surface as a texture. So, based on the kind of texture that you have, the effect will be different, but it will still look more natural and photographic. right? So, the key concept is transfer. That is, you are not printing the textile, but you are transferring the design. And therefore, whatever has to be done, has to be done before somebody else can do and it so happened over the period of time while the printing of paper was going on and the printing of textile was going on, the 
paper printing technologies and systems got designed, developed much better for various reasons and this is to utilize that knowledge for the textile purpose. So, transfer printing, so this is where we look as a key concept. So, is this a new method or a style? What do you call that? Would you call it a new style or a new method of printing? So, it is a method. Style is that the same design is being put it on a textile directly. So, style remains the same and then you work around because all that was needed to be done has already been done. You want to do discharge, why? Because you wanted to have a certain effect after discharge. So, that effect was that there is a color here and there is a color there. There is a small spot here and a big spot there. These were the differences that you are looking at. And I say it is exactly same thing, I can print on a paper and I transfer. So, the whole method will remain the same style, but the method is you print somewhere else. And paper printing would not like to have situations where you do resist printing and discharge printing because that would require all kinds of chemicals and that would mean a damage to the paper itself and therefore, that is no question. So, they were direct printing systems and from direct printing you print the direct style onto the thing with transfer. So, how can we achieve? We will just go through in the beginning with some of the systems and then uh, later we will discuss in detail. So, one of the most important development historically has been the advent of sublimation transfer. Sublimation you understand is a material going from a solid state to a vapor state without melting, without getting into the liquid phase. Advantage that also it gives is that the molecules when they sublime or the particles when they sublime, they are actually in the molecular form. The vapor is not, the particles are not vaporizing, it is the particle after sublimation, the molecules are there in the air. So, for any diffusion process, we understood it is not the particle which goes inside, it is the molecule which must diffuse. Sublimation immediately provides you that option. So, this was one of the commercially successful, this is should I say commercially successful method. Okay. Sometimes also is referred to a dry heat transfer. So, because using dry heat to sublime. No first printing means basically nothing to be done. Put the textile or a substrate, heat it up, it will just go in and you are happy. The dye in a substrate combination, that is an important part. Every dye that you have seen and used cannot sublime. So, every material or a substrate that you see may not like the dye that sublimes and so you have to have a right combination. Now, the right combination comes with a class of dye which we know as a dispersed dye and synthetic fabrics like polyesters. This is almost like a made for each other kind of situation. When somebody designed dispersed dye, they were not hoping this would be happening, although during fixation you had had the thermosol fixation also and they understood this could be the mechanism also. So, as long as you are interested in using a dispersed dye and a synthetic fabric like polyester, because even today if you think all synthetic fabrics, acrylics do not, people do not dye. You can dye acrylics with dispersed dye, they do not dye. You can dye nylon also with dispersed dye, but you do not dye, right. So, it is the polyester which you dye with dispersed dye. So, actually dispersed dye and a polyester combination 
is the best combination that as far as the transfer printing is concerned which is sublimation transfer printing. A lucky break we will call it and the dispersed dice sublime that is understood and polyester is open at a temperature where the sublimation takes place. What therefore it means is that you have let us say 200 degree centigrade, 190 degree centigrade. Then the polyester segments mobility is very high, the pores are open, vibrations are good enough and the diffusion can take place. So, if you do the same thing at any other temperature, polyester may not be receptive. Like you have to normal dyeing has to be done at high temperature, high pressure, but here the sublimation itself is at a high temperature and therefore they just fit into each other. And this therefore has been a commercially successful system. So, as I said dye is in a vapor form which means molecular form and polyester fabric is really in a receptive form. So, this is not that this concept was understood after polyester was developed. So, people had been thinking about things even as early as 1930s that can something be done, but obviously it took time. So, particularly when the cellulose acetate came into picture and then some experiments or accidental experiments could be seen that yes the diffusion can take place. Then a commercialization thought came that is for the PET it took 20 years to come and this process also was tried, but we would say that actual commercialization and production would be even 10 years later. So, when this process came people actually had been forecasting that you would be producing fabrics printed fabrics as 1 to 2 billion meters by 1980s that was the kind of prediction. Excitement was very high, but it did not happen. It did not happen because slowly and slowly it was found that even paper printing and storage is not something which is easy and uneconomical and what do you do with that printed paper after printing that was one. Excitement was such that people said that we could print anything because whatever you can print on a paper can be transferred. So, one is the design the other said well we can actually have an acrylic or a polyester jacket on which we would have printed a worsted photograph you know photograph a worsted fabric like so you may say oh it is a woolen fabric you are wearing, but actually it was polyester. So, ideas flew all over of all kinds, but they did not really succeed in that way the way you wanted it to succeed. In fact, there was a good number of years people were actually thinking that this technology is not going to go too far as far textile printing is concerned, all right. But currently it is a recent study which believes that the value close to 2017 which is something like 9800 US million dollars is likely to go to 13,500 by 2026 hoping that annual growth rate would be about 4 percent. So, that means some revival of interest has come in for the same reasons which were given 40 years before that you are now getting into the same thing and in India also very near to us there are industries who are printing transfer printing paper. Once you print a transfer printing paper after that who wants to print on textile depends on what you have printed on a paper. It could be a t-shirt guy who wants to do it, it is the garment person who wants to do it or 
a person who wants to actually print the whole fabric, anything. So this is still, the interest is still around and therefore, now if you to study better, it is good. Theoretically, if somebody wants to be an entrepreneur today as a printing guy and wanted to use a normal conventional textile printing process, the total cost of a project is very high. This one only requires a simple transfer calendar and you are done. That is the kind of thing you do not have to wash, print, pack, sell and there you are. As long as you are in a sublimation transfer, you are looking for generally polyester, you can do nylon also and of course dispersed dye. If you want something else, then something else has to be done. So, from the transfer point of view, other methods also people wanted to try. For example, any dye which does not sublime, then does not sublime. Material that people wear is not polyester. So, how many people currently for example, are wearing polyester? Not much. And therefore, even if technology is very nice and have the people who want to use 100 percent polyester, you can use blends, but the transfer will happen only the polyester part of it, not the other part. If any dye goes there, because it will go, vapors do not uh, you know, distinguish between who is in front, but fiber does. Fiber may not like it and if it does not like, then it does not like. So, you wear different kinds of fabrics and garments, use them. And so, people were looking at, is there any other method you can work around. So, one method which is termed as a wet transfer, so that was a dry transfer. So, the fabric is dry, the sublimation thing and the particles are dry, the paper is dry, everything is dry, other wet. And why do you need wet? Obviously, you have hydrophilic fibers. The diffusion, they do not like dispersed dye and therefore, if you want to do the transfer, sublimation is not the answer. Unless you say, well, do not worry, whatever we can do is good enough. So, that is it. So, you want to do a wet transfer, therefore, you got to have a system where you are again printing the same manner, but during transfer, there is enough moisture available for the dye to again get dissolved, then diffuse. And you can also appreciate if it is a silk fabric and you are looking at acid dye which will be water soluble, then after it is diffused, let us say you provide a moist thing hot environment, it gets diffused, you still have to fix. So, there was a post treatment required. Hmm. Unlike dispersed polyester combination, there is no post treatment required almost. You just do the transfer and pack. Here, you may have a situation where because you have a wet condition, so what you do is maybe you can take the fabric and then moist it and then let the paper come in contact. And then after doing this, you have to separate them out, then you have to fix them. You may also find that let us say reactive dye, everything is not reacted. That means, you will require washing. So, you may require washing, you may require thing. But of course, photographic designs can be transferred. Right. So, but the process is different. So, water soluble dyes printed on a paper and transferred to a wet or a moist fabric. So, it cannot be too much wet, otherwise design may get smudged, paper may get torn because paper obviously does not like the water too much. You see, the 
polyester dispersed case, it is so good, the paper also does not like dispersed dye and polyester likes. So, when you have vapor, they have a tendency only go to the polyester and not get retained by the paper. If this is a normal paper in a wet transfer, then what do you have? We have a situation where paper is also cellulosic, fabric also cellulosic, then under the conditions in which you are looking at, it may like to get retained on the paper also. So, although you can say, well, I have not added alkali, I will add alkali later, that means fixation step will be a different step. First is just wet diffusion and then fixation, so it can happen, you can work around. But then again, as I said, through the aqueous medium. So, there will be some dissolution happening and has to be very controlled dissolution, so that as when it is getting transferred, it is directly going to the place where it is supposed to go, a color and not anywhere else. Otherwise, you will not obviously get the same effect of a photographic image. If you are just transferring a normal design, squares, circles, checks and so on and so forth, that is fine. It is not going to have much problem. If you have got 5 or 6 colors, it is not a problem at all, which is going to be the major consumption whenever it happens. There will be hardly, you know, anybody who would like to have photograph of a jungle always everywhere on t-shirts and trousers and shirts. So, that is a fashion kind of environment, but the normal environment is simple designs. All simple designs can be printed relatively easily. But for reasons that we have just slightly understood, the commercial success of this process is not is yet to be seen, right. But promises are quite a lot. We understand it is a difficult process and so a difficulty is not in terms of selection of dye and fabric, it is the technology part itself and so you work around. There is another way of transfer is that you have something on a paper or a film which selectively according to design could be you know, melted and then transferred. So, you are looking at part of a film is going to be melting and then getting transferred. So, it is a process. So, why I am trying to say is whether something becomes commercial or does not become commercial. As an engineer, you think that somebody, whenever you talk about a concept, everybody would like to say, can this be done, can that be done. Whether you do it or not is a separate story, but as an engineer, you are going to be using this. So, this is one of the things that people thought, well, we can transfer the whole thing called a design after melting. If it contains color, very good, like, so like a waxy ink, wax can melt, you can put it and that can go. So, I do have to go to a temperature where this would happen. So, this process which says melt and transfer design onto textile. So, you are melting and transferring. So, you are going into room above room temperature, right. It was originally, originally it was used for embroidering designs. So, you take a textile, put this kind of a thing and then you get some color or maybe no color and then you put the embroidery around the same thing. So, design is immediately transferred, that is one, one of the uses. So, people melt transferring systems and that is it. So, wherever you do certain things, hair also, whatever is in the film that is going to melt and get transferred, will get transferred irrespective of whether it likes the fiber or it does not like the fiber. You see, in the first cases, the dispersed dye liked the fiber. In the wet transfer, you also wanted fiber and dye to like each other. In this case, you are saying it is just the molten material is going there and going to get stuck. It has got color and design. So, do not worry about it. Whatever happens will be there. 
Of course, you will have to worry when you wash it, when you rub it, it's abrasion resistance and all those kind of things are going to come into play. But if you are looking at a fashion, this is it, you can work around. Sometimes called the hot split transfer also, so it's a split. You are splitting the material from that portion and getting into, because sometimes it may be a film which is the same color, but you are splitting into say and design is coming of the same color can come just like that, only at portion and somewhere the material has gone out and gone on to the textile and you see that, so you see blank on the thing. Other is similar, but it is like a film getting released. So, film containing the color it transferred completely. So, there is a film which is on the paper loosely held, but when you put it there, it likes the paper less than the fabric and it just, when you press, compress or do whatever, it just gets transferred onto the substrate. The difference is that here is a completely the film gets released from a release paper by heat or pressure, okay. So, nothing is there on the paper, so there is a paper. In the other case, it could be actually a film which is a colored film which gets melted and then gets transferred, okay. So, that is a little difference, which is interesting difference. It has become popular for different reasons today. The so called temporary tattoos people want to use, it could be on your shelf, something similar could be on the fabric also. And so, this itself is a market, but it is a transfer. So, design is somewhere on the release film and the whole of the film which is on the release paper gets transferred to whatever surface that you give. Tattoos obviously, the whole system is designed that you do not have to heat it, right. It is a room temperature transfer, you just have to apply a certain pressure and remove and you are not looking at permanency there. If you are not looking at permanency, so you wash it off, it goes very good, next time, next design and you are happy. So, one interesting thing which recently people saying, well, if this is what happens, I can make electrodes, tattoos, which could be an electrode here and not connected to some sense, uh, some uh, measuring device and whatever happens, whatever you are doing, it is on your skin, this is a tattoo which actually looks like a nitrous tattoo, but it is actually is an electrode. So, when you want to do an ECG for that matter, what do you do? Char panch electron chipka diye, mote mote wa chhe lag rahe. Here you could do a simple thing for at least two days or one day, you are getting monitored and you feel well, it is a nice tattoo, nobody bothers about it. But this is not just a dream, but people are actually thinking that this kind of thing also can, conducting inks can be used to make a tattoo, which is again means electrode. Of course, fashion, but this is a fashion no? plus, this is a fashion plus that you actually are getting a functional thing out of it also. So, we will stop here. So, as we move further, we will look into how people do the selection of a paper, how, what kind of a printing methods are used for printing paper, what are the dyes and inks, you know. The, the change that is happening is that whatever we call dyes and pigments in textiles, paper industry always calls everything as ink. So, from dyes, pigments to you go on to the inks, the selection of inks, etcetera, etcetera. This is what will be interesting. So, let us say we will look at it later. Thank you.